Before we talk about the Platonic Solids and Euler's Theorem, let's do a quick review. We said that a polyhedron is a simple closed surface made up of polygonal faces. And we also were able to attach a name to each of the polyhedrons we looked at. For example, this one we said would be a rectangular prism. We saw that these are made up of faces, which are those flat two-dimensional shapes that make up the exterior of the shape. In this case, for this rectangular prism, it has six faces. The edges are those line segments where the faces intersect. So in all, this rectangular prism has 12 edges. And the vertices are the points where all of those edges intersect. So this rectangular prism has a total of eight vertices. Now if we extend this notion of faces, edges, and vertices a little bit, we can look at something called Euler's Theorem. Euler's Theorem says that for any polyhedron, the number of faces plus the number of vertices will always equal the number of edges plus two. For example, for this rectangular prism, the number of faces is six, the number of vertices is eight, so six plus eight equals the number of edges, which is 12, plus 2. 14 does equal 14. So we see that we can verify Euler's theorem for this particular rectangular prism. So let's see if we can verify for some other shapes that we've already looked at. Here's a hexagonal prism. It has eight faces, 18 edges and 12 vertices. The number of faces, 8, plus the number of vertices, 12, is 20. And the number of edges, plus 2, 18 plus 2, is also 20. So we can see that Euler's theorem is verified for this hexagonal prism. How about this rectangular pyramid? It has five faces, eight edges and five vertices. So the faces plus vertices is five plus five, the edges plus two is eight plus two, and 10 does equal 10. So once again, we can see that Euler's theorem is verified. Now we said a polyhedron is a simple closed surface made up of polygonal faces, but we're going to specialize this a little bit and look at a particular type of polyhedra that are called platonic solids. So a platonic solid is still a polyhedron. It's still made up of polygonal faces, but all of those faces will be one type of regular polygon. And just a reminder, regular polygons have congruent sides and congruent angles. So here's some examples of the regular polygons from three sides up to eight sides. And obviously there are regular polygons that have much more than eight sides. But as it turns out, for the platonic solids to make up a three-dimensional figure that has faces that are all the same and are all regular polygons, these are the only three regular polygons we can use to make platonic solids. And there are only five platonic solids that can be made. The cube, the octahedron, the tetrahedron, the icosahedron, and the dodecahedron. So let's look at the cube first. Uh, the cube is a platonic solid because all six of its faces are made up of squares, and squares are regular polygons. They have equal sides and equal angles. A cube also has 12 edges, and it has eight vertices. So let's see if we can verify Euler's theorem for this cube. 
the faces plus vertices is 8 plus 2, and its edges plus 2 is 12 plus 2. 14 does equal 14, so we can see that Euler's theorem is verified for this cube. Now the next platonic solid we're going to look at is the tetrahedron. And it's actually one of three platonic solids that have faces that are made up of equilateral triangles. For the tetrahedron, we have four of those triangular faces. We also have six edges, and we have four vertices. Now verifying that with Euler's theorem shows us that four plus four does equal six plus two. The second platonic solid that's made up of faces that are equilateral triangles is the octahedron. It has eight faces, 12 edges, and six vertices. And as you can see, Euler's formula is verified for the octahedron as well. The third platonic solid that has faces that are made up of equilateral triangles is the icosahedron. It has 20 faces, 30 edges, and 12 vertices. And verifying that with Euler's theorem shows us that 20 plus 12 does equal 30 plus 2. Now there's one last platonic solid. It's the dodecahedron, and it's the only platonic solid that has faces that are regular pentagons. It has a total of 12 faces, 30 edges, and 20 vertices. And verifying that with Euler's theorem shows that 12 plus 20 does equal 30 plus 2. Now these are the only five platonic solids, the only five three-dimensional shapes that can be formed by using only one regular polygon to make up all the faces. Now we can also take any solid and look at it in some ways that we've already looked at things like prisms and pyramids. We could take the solid and think about what would happen if we peeled it open and laid all the faces flat and formed a net. If we did that for this dodecahedron, we'd have a net that would look like this. We can see those 12 regular pentagons that form the faces of the dodecahedron. We could also talk about a vertex net for the dodecahedron. Now we've talked about vertex nets for two-dimensional shapes, two-dimensional patterns. Um, and the notion of a vertex net is really exactly the same for these three-dimensional shapes. We think about any vertex on the three-dimensional shape, and we look at the faces that surround that vertex. So in this case, we have a pentagon with five sides, another pentagon with five sides, and a third pentagon with five sides. So the vertex net for this dodecahedron could be described as 555. Now I'd like to also mention one other type of solid um, that's not platonic solids. But what you'll notice about all of these Archimedean solids is that the faces are still made up of regular polygons, but the solid is made up of more than one type of regular polygon. For example, if you look in the top row at the middle, we have a truncated cube. That truncated cube has faces that are regular octagons and regular triangles. Now there's only 13 types of Archimedean solids, and we could actually look at nets for these solids, and we could look at vertex nets for these solids. So for example, the truncated octahedron, it's up in the top row, it's the fourth one. 
if we looked at one vertex of that truncated octahedron and then counted the number of sides on the polygons that surround that, we can see that we have a hexagon, a hexagon, and a square, so we could describe its vertex net as 664. Now the Archimedean solids, there's only 13 of them, um, but they do have some rather interesting names. Um, you're not going to be responsible for memorizing the names of these Archimedean solids. Um, I just want you to be aware of them and realize that we could make vertex nets form, form them um, and we can look at nets from them. You will be responsible for knowing the names of the platonic solids, however.